it's the next level. Carlo, I'm a huge fan of your work. What are you doing here? That was not the reaction I was expecting. Hey, 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 stop! Show some respect! This is the Star-Lord. Legendary outlaw steals from the powerful and gives to the powerless. Should we be bowing? I feel like we should be bowing. I mean, unless we should be kneeling. Neither is necessary. Please! You are a lord. It is not an official title, nor is it one I am comfortable with. <laughs> of course you will be humble. Classic Star-Lord. Hey panelers, welcome back to the show. I'm Mark. And I'm Steve. And this is going to be a spoiler full podcast about the second episode of Marvel's What If on Disney Plus. And what we're covering this week is What If T'Challa Became Star Lord. And it's also Steve Brown's birthday, and we <laughs> have to wish Mr. Steve Brown a happy birthday. Well, thank you so much. Yes, we are recording this on my birthday, so it's uh, it's, it's kind of fun. <laughs> it is fun. And unfortunately, mine is about five days later. So. I, I was going to say, you're, you're the same month. You're, you're just a few days away. So a little bit younger, but not much. A little bit younger, I, I yeah. I got you by a couple years. Yep, you do. <laughs> but uh, do you want to start us off with the synopsis? Sure. The synopsis for this one is what would have happened if T'Challa and not Peter Quill was picked up by Yondu as a child and became Star-Lord. Yes. Pretty simple and to the point. <laughs> to the point And... Let's move right along into our initial thoughts. Yeah, what did you think, Mark? I thought it was an awesome episode. I loved it. The first watch, I was really glued to the set and laughing. I just love that T'Challa was not the buffoon that Peter Quill was. I love that Chadwick. Bo I got to hear Chadwick Boseman again. It was amazing. Mm -hmm. And But the character is the complete opposite of Peter Quill. <laughs> yeah. Way smarter than Peter in every way. I loved how Thanos changed his ways due to T'Challa's uh, influence and that Nebula has a little thing for T'Challa at the same time, too. I thought it was pretty cool. Uh, very cool. And also that the fact that uh, Nebula is very, very different. She's a long-haired blonde. She doesn't have as much, uh, like, stuff that they enhanced on her and everything else that uh, Thanos was doing and torturing her. And the humor overall. Come on was, now, you're taking you're taking away my points, man. Come the, on. The humor all, <laughs> all over, on honestly, was spot on for me. Yeah, but yeah. Let's, it was really good. Yeah, I loved it, man. It, it blew me. It completely blew me away. I was I was so impressed, and that you know, last week's was not a huge change to the multiverse. It was a change to yes that particular timeline, yeah. but it was basically the same story as Captain America the First Avenger pretty much with a little tweaks but this one was hugely I mean hugely different from one little thing to where where you know Completely characters changed can, yeah can, it, um <laughs> that one that one little change had this huge implications for the entire universe uh and I'll say it now if it's one of your points I'm sorry that I'm stealing it the ending was great from the moment I saw Kurt Russell's name in the <laughs> credits I was waiting for him to show up and I was just like what how are they going to work ego into this story if they didn't pick up the correct Peter Quill and then of course we get him at at the very end and I thought that was just wonderful well we always need Jack Burton or Snake Plissken in a movie you know that <laughs> exactly <laughs> even exactly. though he is ego the living planet <laughs> So I went first last week, Mark, so I think you should start this week All right, with your so, top five. All right, cool. So we'll move right along into our top fives. No, 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 because it's random. Uh -huh. And I might add, efficient. <laughs> I mean, if you really wanted to put a label on it, it's Charlie and I. That's random. And my number five would be, I just love the whole twist in the story. Apparently Yandu outsourced his subordinates to, to get Ego's lost son from earth and they happened onto t'challa thinking it was peter quill due to the power coming from that area and screwed it all up <laughs> it, it, it made me laugh and i'm like oh all humans look alike <laughs> yeah 
And then, it was great. Yeah, and Craglin was the reason for this, too, of all things. And Craglin's got some good teeth, too, at this point. And they loved the kid and with Yandu, and they kept him. And basically did the same thing with Peter, but in a different way, if you think about it. They mm-hmm. embraced it, whereas Peter was always fighting back. And with T'Challa, he wasn't fighting back. They embraced his his mind, his philosophy, his thoughts and everything and created a family. And, but very similar to what happened with Peter, Yandu lied about going back to earth and stated that Wakanda was destroyed, which kept him and them. And they just, you know, continued with that family. Yeah. But later on, we do see what happened and uh the truth does come out but it doesn't really change anything and i really enjoyed that fact yeah yeah this was my number five as well was was just the fact that that what did he say two ear holes two, uh, two c holes one eat hole or something like that yeah, yeah. Um, and he's like that's all that's all they saw of of shala and he like shows a picture of him it's clearly the, like a totally different kid but anyway so yeah, I just I just loved it. Uh, the the whole, it was just hilarious that whole thing. Uh, like you said, the outsourcing of it, and that was the little change that that caused everything to go different. And and we're going to talk about some more of those changes and the huge effect that they had on not just the the universe, but I mean, like I was saying at the beginning, the, the last episode basically affected one movie maybe two movies because it was her coming out of the yeah uh, instead of loki but this one changed i mean how many of our original mcu movies got changed because of this what if hugely end game (laughs) end game literally ended yeah exactly so is this one of the millions of things that dr strange actually saw in end game when it was looking through all the timelines yeah you never know yeah so what's your number four? My number four, that would be the intro to the show with the same sort of intro from a Star-Lord that had to get the Power Stone from the same place as Peter. You know, it, we in the original Guardians of the Galaxy, uh, we we see Peter, he has to go get the uh, the Power Stone. And he goes through all these things. He does his little dance moves. In this case, uh, T'Challa actually shows up, does his thing, gets it, and just like with Peter in the first movie that we see, then we were introduced with Peter Quill, T'Challa is, you know, attacked by some guys, but they're the same exact guys that you saw in the first Guardians movie. But in this case, in the, instead of him saying, you know, and they just recognized him as Star Lord, whereas Peter Quill had to announce who he was, yeah. and they didn't have a clue. Who? Um, the legendary outlaw, man. <laughs> and obviously, with this, it's like, oh my god, I love you. Oh, classic. Oh, that's classic Star Lord. And it's like, oh no, no, that is the point. You must hit me. <laughs> it's like all these cool little things and references. It was amazing, and I just loved it. But. Yeah, the fact that you know T'Challa is like applauded for his work and respected, and somebody wanted to be part of his crew at that point. Then obviously with Yandu, you know, is working with with uh, T'Challa at that point, and uh, you know they wind up getting this guy, and he goes, "Oh, I've recruited worse." <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. I loved it. This is, uh, again, I, we're, we're hitting some of the very same beats here. Yeah. Um, I, I love that, that, so that switch around in that, in that scene to where Korath, you know, in, in the Guardians, the first Guardians movie, Korath is like, who? And in this one, he's like, you're Star-Lord, you're, yeah, da, 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 and all this. And, and I love how through the dialogue, we, we learn that he had basically convinced the Ravagers to become Robin Hood, you know, and, and start stealing from the rich and giving to the poor and helping people out. And that, just just the idea, and I'll talk some more about these changes uh, later on, but just the, the whole idea of the Ravagers that we saw in the Guardians movie and in Volume 2, even when they're on that planet, yeah. you know, um, they're they're all just all kind of mercenaries, and they're, some of them are kind of anti-heroes, kind of good, kind of bad, yeah. but 
this one, they're straight up Robin Hoods, and I just was, I just loved it. I, I was, I was so impressed that the character change in Yondu is is just incredible. You know, he went from being this surly, mean, but he's the same skill level. Like yes. you see him take down all those guys outside yep. of the when uh, when T'Challa says Ravagers never fly solo. You know, <laughs> I'm taking my quotes away now, but uh, yeah, that, that was it. Was great to see how. T'Challa himself, the character, was able to change these other characters in this in this what if and in this world. Yes, and we'll talk about we'll probably talk about some more of them as we as we go along. Well, and to speak about this uh, with the people that were voicing, we got Rooker back, we got Sean Gunn back, we got to, obviously Chadwick Boseman. It's the last thing that we're probably ever going to hear him in. And he did such a great job, and it was more life within him in that character for this particular episode in his voice. And it just, I was just smiling ear to ear yeah. because it was so, I was so glad to hear him. But uh, we also get Taser Face too, <laughs> and a whole bunch of slew of others that we'll go into as we yeah. talk. But. I really enjoyed hearing all those character voices as we went through because a lot of the MCU actors came back to revoice their characters, which I'm really enjoying. Yeah. And I must uh, actually admit, I did make a mistake last week. I said that Chris Evans did the voice. It wasn't. It was somebody else. And Derek from P TV Podcast Industries actually stated it, and I didn't listen to it year till like a few days later. And it wasn't him. And yeah. a lot of other people did not come back. Uh, Dave Bautista did not come back either. And that, I think, had to do with the James Gunn issue with Marvel at one point when he was fired. And now he's rehired. And obviously we got Suicide Squad. The Suicide Squad. <laughs> Suicide Squad. But uh, we didn't get uh, Dave Bautista. But we have a lot more people that we do enjoy that we've seen on film that are voicing their characters from the MCU within yeah. this particular episode. And it's amazing. I'm just, I just loved it for that fact. Cause it's like a familiar voice yeah. and you, you just could get into it. The animation was great, but I'm stepping all over Steve right now. So <laughs> he needs to move on. Yes. Yes. We need your number three. Cause that wraps up mine. Um, I just, I, like I said, I loved, we hear through the dialogue, all the good, that they had that they had done, and that's that's really my point. Is that just the fact that T'Challa, through his his skills as an orator, hmm. you know, he didn't have to fight him. He didn't have to. He it was just through. And I've got a quote that I'll read at at the end uh, that I that I love. But uh, uh, so, what's your number three? My number three. I just love the twist of Thanos and company, and how mm -hmm. T'Challa changed his mind about taking over the galaxy and causing genocide. And it was an ongoing gag or joke about it when he would discuss it with people. And it was like, yeah, it's still genocide. <laughs> and everybody keeps talking about that. Okoye actually mentions it, which is so funny. And yeah. it, uh, plus the fact that we, you know, Nebula, Nebula has a little thing for T'Challa and has a little nickname for him, too. Cha-cha. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that was that was great. I love that that the whole running gag with it when and there at the end, especially when when they're like, No, that's genocide. He's like, No, because it's random. You know? Yeah, it's yeah, right. Just, uh, that makes any difference, right? Yeah, exactly. Um this was this was again, this was my number three as well. We're, we're, but it was slightly different because I did, I really, really loved, absolutely loved the sexy looking uh nebula that yeah. we get in this. And the fact that Karen Gillum uh voiced her was was just incredible and it, it was it was just really, really cool. Again, and you already mentioned it that that T'Challa he he must have changed Thanos' mind before he got to Gamora's planet because we don't have Gamora yep. in in this. And we also get to see Drax. We get to see how Drax. And I I, I really like this. I think was my maybe my favorite moment uh, to to pull out of the episode is to see the change in Drax character as much as I liked him mm -hmm. in the movies and what he became after the death of his wife and daughter. Um, in this, we see 
what he would have become if they weren't killed. Yep. And and we see this this happy he's he's tending bar, he's he's not he's he's not anywhere that the, the the taciturn kind of terse, you know, guy that he is. He's still the same literalist that that he always <laughs> is, you know, but it's it's there was just a lightness to it that I thought was was really really great. And I wish Dave Batista had been able to voice him. But that's okay too. Yeah. Yeah, it, it was a fun scene to watch too. By mm -hmm. the way, I just really enjoyed it. It's like, yeah, yeah. it's like, oh, we take only take cash here. It's like, oh, wait, you're Star Lord. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I need to take a picture for my wife and my daughter. <laughs> and then he, he's like, no, that's bad. I look great. You look terrible. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was. It just was wonderful to see how what that character would have become. Yeah, exactly, and it, it was such a, a, a such a, a twist of mm -hmm. fate, and that's what what I really enjoyed because you could see these people in a different light now, and mm -hmm. they are family, and it's a different Guardians of the Galaxy if you think about it. Oh yeah, all totally. said and done, you know, yeah. you know, no Rocket, no Groot, and no Gamora, but we have pretty much a gist of the people that were centralized within that movie itself yeah. yeah really really good so my number two your number two that would be the triple cross that nebula puts into place with the collector uh was it me or did the collector look too buff in this particular version <laughs> <laughs> he absolutely was buffer and i didn't think about it until i was listening to another podcast talk about it is that you know when he when he fills that vacuum that thanos creates by not becoming this this kind of crime boss, big bad guy of the universe. He then, he's got a bigger collection. He's a bigger guy. Oh yeah. And you know maybe that's that might be part of the reason we were talking about Benicio del Toro's kind of cadence and how the how he sounded different. How this collector sounds different than the collector from Guardians of the Galaxy. Mm -hmm. Well, maybe Benicio del maybe that was a choice by Benicio del Toro saying, well, how would my character be different? Yeah. If he was this huge crime boss instead of just this kind of, you know, lower level rich guy. Sniveling, out. weaseling kind of yeah, guy in nowhere. Guy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What would he have become if if he was really a crime boss on this other planet? So, yeah. Or on nowhere. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I also love the, the whole plan thing coming together regardless of T'Challa finding out that Yandu lied. Mm -hmm. Even the plan still went accordingly. Plus, yeah, it all worked out in the end. Yeah. I, I just love that whole idea. It's like, because T'Challa found forgiveness, whereas with Peter, he probably wouldn't. Because you saw what happened with Ego and everything mm -hmm. in the second Guardians movie. Yeah, yeah. Um, this was kind of, this plays it's kind of my same number two as well. Um just the whole plan thing and the triple cross. And, uh, you know, at first I thought, well, I guess the plan didn't work out. But then when you think about it, actually, it did work out with the whole triple cross thing, with the fact that Yondu stayed behind to help uh, T'Challa fight the collector. And it just, again, it's more of these, these big universe changes yep. that we didn't get from, um, from the first episode. It was more, you know, kind of tiny changes, one little tiny one, changes, a little twist of what happened yeah. within the story and just changing one character or two characters yeah. at most, or maybe three because the winter soldier yeah. wasn't really changed. He didn't yeah. turn into the winter soldier, mm -hmm. but I still, I still stand by. I, I think that was a good introduction to the series and it this was. one. It, and I think like if we had gotten this one first, it would have just, our minds would have been just blown. blown. And then, yeah. and then when we got to episode two, we would have been kind of deflated. So if, if they had swapped these is what I'm saying. Exactly. So I, I'm, I'm really glad that we got this as the number two and I can't wait to see what number three is going to be. Yeah. I, I can't wait for it too. I don't know what it is at the look. <laughs> so what's your number one? Well, that ending scene with uh, Peter Quill working oh, at a shop sorry. and cleaning. Sorry. I stole it from you. It's Okay. It, we have the same one, probably. So, <laughs> and then we get Ego come to see his son. That made me think right away. There is going to be more to these universes within the show, maybe because we do have a season two, apparently. Yeah, so we could see what happens when Ego 
picks up Peter Quill. Yeah, and with the uh, Multiverse of Madness, we might actually have a crossover point and maybe crossovers within the actual MCU itself as well and bring these characters into play within the live action. And that would be awesome. Yeah, yeah. Um, So my number one is, you kind of already talked about it a little bit, is I think... But I think we would we would expect T'Challa to forgive Yondu and move past that lie uh, so quickly because that's his character. That's who he is. Yes. Is that he's he's just going to go, well, that's the past and I'm not going to dwell on that. And that's even kind of what Yondu says. You can't dwell on the past. You're meant to be an explorer. Mm. And I loved that scene with T'Challa and his father where he tells his father, no, I'm, I'm not coming back. Space is where is where I belong. And even to the point where he stops, you know, he stops Yondu from telling the truth. Exactly. He just says, he just says oh, I was lost and they found me. It was and a form I of forgiveness that, to him. Absolutely. I, I thought it was just incredible on T'Challa's part. Oh, yeah. It, it, it's so, because now he has two families. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, so we've got some notes. Yeah, sure. You want to start us off? Sure. Uh, I love that fight between T'Challa, Yondu, and the Collector. Uh, all the things kind of in the background, and I'm sure I didn't pick up on all of them, but we see Captain America's shield at one point is in the Collector's collection. Um, you know, obviously he has that helmet from Hela. Was mm. that was that Thor the Dark World or was that Ragnarok? Where she had Ragnarok. That Ragnarok. Okay. Okay. Uh, so I was I was mistaken on that. I put my notes. I thought it was Dark World, but okay. So we see that one for Ragnarok, um, and it just it just was really really good. And and just like I said, I can't wait to start watching some <laughs> of these other breakdown, like Eric Voss and, and New Rock Stars and and uh, the Nerdist and all these other breakdowns. Oh yeah, they all, they go deep dives and they collect all the little bit and tidbits of information and then exploit yeah, it yeah. and then you your mind is even more exploded <laughs> after right, that right, yeah. right. Uh, so what's one of yours uh, is, well Drax bartending and asking for a picture <laughs> with the Tala that was uh, to me that was too funny you know yeah, yeah. yeah the fact that we get a different Drax that, that was the yeah. only thing that I could say because to me it was so funny <laughs> um, I, I absolutely loved the the different relationship between Nebula and, and Thanos, you know, uh, in, in the old, in the, the OG universe, the MC or the MU, she, you know, kind of ends up going against him and betraying him in this one though. She actually saves him. And there's one point where it was towards the end. It might've been when he was talking about genocide where she goes, dad, you know, (laughs) it was like a father daughter moment. It's like, dad, no, don't say that. (laughs) It was, it was just really great to see that different kind of relationship. Again, we talked about the changes that, that had, um, that had here that, that is just huge. Uh, that I thought was really great. Next up for me would be Howard the Duck giving the tour of the collector's place on nowhere so he can get the embers of Genesis. <laughs> I thought that was hilarious for the fact that, you know, even Howard thought, oh, wait, he's going to shoot me. Mm-hmm. Oh, give me a tour. <laughs> and then yeah. he, and of course, Howard ditches him to get a, bo- a drink at the bar. Exactly. <laughs> Uh, for me, I love that Karina, the the assistant of the collector, ends up at the end being the one who's releasing all the other the other uh, jailed or you know other collected people, and they're gonna they're gonna take down the collector. I thought it was great, you know, in the in the uh, which one was it in Avengers or no in Guardians of the Galaxy? She touches the Infinity Stone and blo- ends up blowing yes, everything up because she felt uh, like she was a slave to the collector, yeah, and she wanted to break free. And at this point. She saw something within T'Challa and loved it and kind of work. It worked in her favor. She didn't die. Thankfully, right. she didn't. Yeah. Touch and the she power actually stone. ends up. Yeah. She ends up being the one uh, who's who's going to end up taking down the collector, which was great. Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, yeah. That was an awesome scene, too. And she just releases everybody who he collected and they just attack. What? Do you have some more? Yeah, I have one more. Uh, actually, two more, but. It's pretty funny, too. The Proxima Midnight, Ebony Mog, and the Crazy Beast that we saw in Endgame are now working for the Collector and not Thanos. And Thanos was pretty much aware of this and saying how much of a threat the Collector is. Even he was afraid of the Collector. Yeah, I loved it. I thought I put it in my notes that the Black Order was now working for the Collector, but I guess I had forgotten to put that in my notes. That was really, really cool to yeah. see Maw using his powers and, and stuff like that. 
Uh, the only other one I have that we we haven't already talked about, uh, and you mentioned, I did, man. I, I choked up a little bit at the dedication to Chadwick Boseman at the end. Yeah. Uh, oh. Yeah, that was hard. It, but the thing is, is it, it, it shows respect to Chadwick Boseman, and I'm glad that mm-hmm. Disney Marvel did that. And it was needed. Yeah. It really was. And it, it was ver- it was done very well. So do you have any more that we haven't already talked about? Nope, that was it. Okay. So we've got some quotes. Sure, I'll start off. Classic Star-Lord. And that's when T'Challa makes him miss his punch in the holding chamber of the infi- that Infinity Stone, the Power Stone. Star-Lord states, Now I almost feel bad. <laughs> uh, I already said it earlier, but a Ravager never flies, al- uh, flies solo. I thought it was great. We hear that twice in the episode. Uh, and just th- again, those little changes that we get of where that uh, Star Lord is still a member of the Ravagers, but the Ravagers are very different. Yeah, I-, I just love this. I said it before, but Yandu to Kraglin and Taserface. Does this look like Peter Quill to you? Shows in the image of Peter as a kid, and Taserface goes, "Sure, I don't know. All humans look alike to me." <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the next one I've got is I, I alluded to it earlier when Star Lord, when they're talking about how he changed, end up changing Thanos' mind. He says sometimes the best weapon in your arsenal is a good argument. Yeah, I think I did a pretty good Chad, Chad Bozeman right there. That that was good. <laughs> uh, next one up for me would be Captain Genocide, and that's the the new guy. I forget his name from Korath. Uh, oh, Korath. Okay. The, one of the yeah one of the uh, cl- working for the. I guess they were working for the collector, right? Yeah, they were. They were, and but he traded. He he turned traitor and joined the Ravagers. Yeah, <laughs> or exactly. the Guardian says this it was. Uh, I I loved when uh, when the collector is is kind of ribbing Yondu about what he's doing now, and Yondu says, "What can I say? We went straight, and I got square." So, <laughs> and the last one I have would be the collector going, "Oh, karma," and that's once Karina lets all the collectors collect collected people loose on him and they attack him and my last one was i was the one who told you i wanted to see the world you showed me the universe again that's that's t'challa to yondu that that scene you're talking about where they forget i get goosebumps man yeah thinking about uh thinking about it and i wasn't even a huge fan of that movie but yeah he's he will be missed he will be missed he did some great work over the years and he did it while he was sick and uh, i'm glad that uh they acknowledge him in this so you got some news? Yes, I do. So, Jim Shooter, who was the original creator of Secret Wars comic back in 1984 to 1985, was asked at a convention panel recently about his involvement with Marvel Disney, and apparently they contacted him in some way. He basically pointed out at a convention, it was a Q&A, and somebody had it on tape, and I heard it on YouTube, he points out that they offered him $10,000 so that they wouldn't have any problems with adapting the storyline for a potential future movie. So back then, all writers and artists were paid by a book. They were just paid by work or their art. If they are a writer, they were paid by story. Artists were paid by their artwork per book. They didn't get residuals. They don't get anything Uh, within ip or anything i think this was a way for marvel disney to shut him up to say anything or to not invoke any sort of uh like he he could sue them for anything but he has no right to that ip anyway but it was a way for them to just like pay him off because they asked him to do some samples and they paid him ten thousand dollars at least at least he got paid for it but I, that's basically, I think, their way of covering themselves because by doing this, because I think that they're going to, and it's been stated that Secret Wars is in the works, possibly at Marvel from various places, and everybody's talking about it, and there's a lot of notable places. But it's interesting. I want definite confirmation, though, that they're going to do this. And I've already mentioned it before that if they were to do a Secret Wars, the multiverse would interplay with this perfectly because literally 
within the one that came out seven years ago, not the one that came out in 84 and 85, it's centered around uh, God Doom or Dr. Doom as playing like a god because he was a this one iteration of him like was able to gather all these people from various places into various battle worlds and they're all heroes and it's really cool and it's a great idea but that works within the multiverse because you could pull different versions of let's say captain america so we could get captain carter and captain america or old cap so they could always bring chris evans as old cap or let's say uh different versions of wolverine but you know we don't know if hugh jackman is actually gonna do anything like that or we get different versions of the guardians of the galaxy things of that nature and where the the worlds just collide and they're put on this battle world if they actually do this uh, that would be amazing but we all know that dr doom is coming in eventually within the mcu and i think he's gonna be one of the big bads that are out there. We already know about Kang. And Kang is a time manipulator as it is. And they are, still have to introduce the Fantastic Four. But what I'm liking also is that with the Disney Plus that we're getting with What If. They could also introduce the Marvel zombies as well within that universe. Because that played well within that comic run as, as well within it. And... The trade paperback is out there, so if you guys that are listening are interested, you could always get that Secret Wars that are that's out there that's most recent. It's from seven years ago, but it's just Secret Wars. You, you'll you know it by the cover because you'll see two different versions. You see, you'll probably still see the original 8485 version in a uh, trade paperback, but you could always pick up the new one, which is amazing. But that's my thoughts on that. Next up would be uh, Jason and Kirk Manley. I actually mentioned it recently on House Podcast Go. We didn't get to it, but apparently Disney has uh, severed all ties with Scarlett Johansson based upon the lawsuit. Mm. So she was supposed to do uh, The Tower of Terror as a movie, which is an old IP and an old amusement park ride. Yeah, But they ended all that and they have severed everything. So everything is in litigation. So She's not going to be involved with Marvel in any way. Yeah. But I, think, I don't know, man. My opinion on that, I think they kind of did her dirty because... They did. Because they, they you know, they the, all the rest of the movies they've already said are not going to be released that way. They're going to release them exclusively in theaters. So the fact that they, they singled out hers to be released both streaming, streaming. And, the, yeah. and theaters is just a slap. It was a slap to the face, and honestly, my feeling is pay the woman. Yeah, pay exactly. Pay her, pay her for what she, what she did, and it's worth it. And I think it it's possible for her to come back. I think yeah. there is a possibility. And I I agree with Jason and Kirk. I don't know why they didn't just cut her a check, man. Just yeah. you you got billions because how I don't know how many what Disney's worth, but just cut her a check for thirty or forty million. It wasn't Kevin Feige. That was it. Oh yeah, no, that was I know. involved. It was, the... it was the new CEO of uh, Disney at that point. That's in charge yeah. of the parks and overall budgets. So yeah. his thought was like, just don't do it. And my feeling, I agree with them. Just cut the woman a check and yeah, get her involved, man. Yeah. Uh, got some podcast recommendations. I do have one that I didn't put in the notes, but I I listened to Wander Lee's season one of Doctor Death, which is all about. Um, the guy in Dallas, Chris, I can't remember his last name, who uh, ended up going to prison for life uh, for elder abuse. If you watched the Hulu documentary series, I think it's like a seven or eight part documentary series on Hulu called Dr. Death with um, – gosh, why am I blanking on all these people's names? The guy from Dawson's Creek, Joshua Jackson. I got oh, it. okay, uh, yeah. Joshua Jackson and um, uh, um, Adam Allen Baldwin. Yeah, the older one. <laughs> is it yeah, it's alan alan baldwin um is just amazing they're both and it's got christian slater's in it but if you watch the documentary listen to this podcast dr death it's eight parts they're all very short they're like 30 minutes each uh 30 or 40 minutes each and they're really great gives you a lot of insight into if that if you find that documentary interesting so dr death on wonderly awesome well for me, it would be watched it in the 80s with Damien Vitale and 
this last episode that came out was about the first Friday the 13th, so he launched it on Friday the 13th. We're covering this episode on August 19th, but uh, he had our friend Jamie Demick on, who you all have heard here on Panels of the Pixels podcast and when we covered Invincible, so I highly recommend that. She did awesome, and I thought it was great. She had a lot of information. <laughs> Absolutely, absolutely. And uh, as uh, always, of course, we want to recommend Wilhelm, and that can be found here on the Next Level Podcast online network. So check that out as well with Ben Beck. So for us, you can submit your feedback to our Facebook page, which is Panels to Pixels, uh, which is facebook.com slash panels to pixels. Obviously, if you're listening to us, uh, you're listening to us on your podcast player of choice. We can be heard on all the big ones and the little ones, Spotify, Google Play, Apple Podcasts, whatever, whatever podcast player of choice you choose. Uh, give us a subscribe, a thumbs up, whatever it is on there. You can check out our website at panels to pixels podcast.com. You can send us an email, panels to pixels one at gmail.com. That's panels to pixels one. The TO is spelled out right in the middle. The number one at gmail.com. We have a YouTube channel, which is just panels to pixels podcast. So check it out. Give us a thumbs up, subscribe. And uh, yeah, just keep up with us every week here, at least uh, for the future, for the next uh, seven. I think this is nine episodes of what if is what yeah. they're saying. We'll be here every week. Hopefully, uh, God willing, the creek don't rise, as we used to say in the old days. We will be here with every episode of What If. So next week, we will cover whatever the next episode is. Exactly. And for those that are you're listening, that if you've gone to the Panels to Pixels podcast dot com site, we are still under construction. I still need a little bit of time to work on it. We kind of changed locations and domains. So keep that in mind. I will probably be revamping it to give a little bit more. Exciting. So, uh, find that out. I would say I would give it till October because I'm in the midst of moving, life changes, a whole bunch of things, but a whole bunch of things that are going on within my life. But I'm still doing this and we are still providing you with content, which I really want to do. So that the same goes with, well, where else can listeners hear us? Well, with me, you could also hear me on. Uh, Adrenaline Cinema Podcast on the Pirate Core Entertainment Network. And there we cover action films, adventure films, and suspense films. I just released earlier last week uh, Planet of the Apes with Jerry. We had a nice. great time with that. So next up would be Atomic Blonde with Wendy. I'm not sure exactly the release date, but just keep in touch here or keep in touch on the Adrenaline Cinema Podcast page on facebook and you'll uh, be updated there as well as the pirate car entertainment facebook page as well very cool and you will be able to hear me this week i have uh, set up a schedule i will be on wilhelm this week discussing american badasses war movies with uh, with ben beck right here on this network so check that out this weekend wilhelm awesome so that was our coverage so uh of what if if <laughs> t'challa became star lord and that was our episode 157 i just want to thank all of you for listening i'm mark and i'm steve and this was panels to pixels and we'll see you on the next panel good night everybody good night